is the spectacular science of the Great Lakes glowing rocks. Under UV light, some of them look good, downright, and magical. So here's one that's glowing. That's a uperlite right here. This is a uperlite. Um, so look at Eric Rintamaki's rock collection under the white light of a 60 watt bulb or with sunlight streaming in the window and you might nod politely. A lifelong rock picker, the Michigander has gathered a smattering of shapes, sizes, and colors. The rocks with rounded edges, many of them small enough to fit in your palm, tell long stories of ancient grinding ice and the relentless movement of waves and sand. Many are unassuming shades of gray, white, or pink, mottled or flecked with black, the rocks are pretty, he says, like cousins of granite and compelling reminders of the turn of time. But they probably won't blow your mind, at least until you see them under ultraviolet light. With a UV lamp in hand, they seem to be laced with orange embers. Looking at them, it's easy to imagine the sound of a crackling fire or the pulse of gurgling magma. Under the right wavelengths, those ordinary seeming rocks begin to blaze like the eye of Sauron. Rintamaki is a collector and seller who specializes in cyanite rocks rich in the mineral sodalite, he dubbed them uperlites, a nod to his home, Michigan's Upper Peninsula, which gives them their fluorescent secret. But these are hardly the only rocks that go bananas under UV light. There are about 4,500 different types of minerals and 500 or so show signs of fluorescence, says James Holstein, collections manager of physical geology at the Field Museum in Chicago. This is what they look like under a UV light. They're pretty awesome, they glow. These are from New Jersey Sterling Mill, the Sterling Hill Mine, um, and they're known for fluorescence. These minerals light up when so-called activator elements inside them are excited by high energy UV light. The atoms in that fluorescent mineral absorb some of that energy, but release the rest as lower energy visible light, hence why the mineral appears to glow, says Gabriella Fairfan curator of gems and minerals at the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History. These activator elements, such as manganese, might be present in very small traces, sometimes on the scale of parts per million. Calcite, fluorite, and willemite are some of the minerals that do this. Under short wave UV light, willemite looks like it's freckled with green slime. Calcite, on the other hand, might look screeching pink under short wavelengths and orange under longer ones. Some rocks contain several types of fluorescent minerals, and still others have minerals that phosphoresce, meaning they can hold onto some of the fluorescent light energy and continue to shine for a while even after the light source is removed. Argonite is an example. That's a double whammy, Holstein says. So this is one. This is calcite um, that's red and willemite um, that's green. But there's no reliable way to identify any of these glowy rocks with the naked eye. Unfortunately, most fluorescent minerals are not quite as charming when they're not under the UV light, Farfan says. There are some excep exceptions, though. Some diamonds are so fluorescent that they respond to the UV light from the sun, so they appear a little milky in plain daylight. But for the most part, the rest lay low. Rintamaki says that people have been tromping over the rocks he calls uperlites for hundreds of years without knowing their secret. Certain geologic deposits are particularly famous for their fluorescent riches. The Sterling Hill Mine in New Jersey is one. And the Smithsonian has a display showing what its walls would look like under the UV. But Rintamaki has found that uperlite turned up seemingly everywhere he looks. Rock hounds have found them on the shores of all five Great Lakes, for instance, and in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, on railroad beds, farm fields, gravel pits, driveways, and even the landscaped areas at McDonald's and Walmart. Anywhere there's rocks, I've found them, Rintamaki says, and here's what they look like. The soda light makes these rocks seem to glow. The key to spotting them, he says, is to look the right way. Rintamaki does his homework. He pokes around rocky beaches on Google Earth to get the lay of the land and then visits in the daytime to get a strong sense of the shoreline in mind. Since the next time he'll be there, it will be really, truly dark. Then he combs the beaches with the 365 nanometer UV flashlight, moving along the shore methodically, even ploddingly, and scans the ground in a grid. He grips the flashlight overhand and holds it by his shoulder, and then tilts the light down toward his feet, and then out in front of him and back again. He moves the light six inches left or right and repeats the process and then starts sweeping the light side to side. Stopping and standing in one place is the best way to look, he says. If you're walking, 
you're going too fast. Once he's covered each patch of ground two or three times, he takes a couple steps and repeats the process. Then he turns and looks behind him in case he's kicked up anything interesting as he moves along. He plants driveway markers with glow sticks mounted on them in the sand so he can find his way back in the darkness. <clears throat> back when he focused on Agate, he says he sometimes came back from collecting trips empty-handed. Now that he's in the Uper light business, he adds, the tour groups he guides around the beach of Lake Superior seem to find things almost instantly. People think you have to walk eight miles, he says. Nope, we might go 200 yards. He believes it's possible to find Uper lights anywhere there's glacial till, a patch of woods, your yard, a local strip mall. No matter where you are or where you live, he says, go get a light and look.